Good morning and welcome to Rising. Happy Monday. Thanks so much for tuning in. We've got a great show for the folks today. I believe, Jessica, why don't you take it away? We are less than three months out from the presidential election and Vice President Kamala Harris has a very important edge over former President Donald Trump. Harris leads Trump by four points in three key swing states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, according to a New York Times Siena College survey. It's a remarkable turn for the Democratic Party. Before President Biden dropped out, Biden and Trump were pretty much tied in Michigan and Wisconsin, and Trump was leading in Pennsylvania. According to the survey, voters view Harris as more intelligent and temperamentally fit to govern, more so than Trump. Harris also has a 24-point advantage for voters on abortion, and Harris also has gained ground for the Democratic Party with young voters and black voters, both key parts of the Democrats' coalition. Now, the polls also show Harris's running mate pick, Governor Tim Waltz, is performing better than Trump's pick, Senator J.D. Vance. 48% of voters said they were excited about Waltz compared to just 43 for Vance. But it's worth noting voters prefer Trump when it comes to handling the economy and immigration. Plus, 42% of voters said that Harris is too liberal, while only 37% had the same to say about her predecessor on the ticket, Joe Biden, the presumed Democratic nominee, until recent events. Now, the New York Times points out that it's unclear how much of Harris's bounce in the polls stems from heightened excitement surrounding her jump to the top of the ticket and whether that momentum will actually last. Meanwhile, Trump is also having to deal with a hack over the weekend. Trump's campaign said some of its internal communications had actually been hacked. The announcement came after Politico reported they had been receiving emails from an anonymous account with documents from inside Trump's operation. Trump's campaign blamed Iran and said that foreign adversary, that foreign adversary had intended to interfere with the 2024 election, so chaos throughout our democratic process. Campaign cited a Microsoft report that found Iranian hackers had sent a spear phishing email in June to a high ranking official on a presidential campaign, though the identity of the campaign hacker had not been independently confirmed. Now, <clears throat> according to Politico, they were getting these uh, documents from this hacker. Robert. Yes. That's <laughs> Oh, <laughs> where was I at the time? <laughs> the, uh, the hacker has, is going by the name Robert. Um, the documents apparently pertain to J.D. Vance, including early mm -hmm. vetting materials on him, um, which were labeled by the Trump campaign. So it's basically the Trump campaign going through all his previous statements. And uh, they had labeled some of them, according to Politico, as potential vulnerabilities, particularly the criticisms he'd had of Trump previously. Um, it's also clear from these... Hacked materials, again, according to Politico, we've not viewed them ourselves, and Politico is not publishing them, uh, given the potentially illegal origins of them. But uh, Marco Rubio was also in the vetting um, documents. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Trump, right. the Trump campaign says this was the responsibility of Iran. Uh, Iran is responsible for it, which aligns with what Microsoft has said about um, the hack. Right. And of course, a lot of news sources are willing to publish leaks if they get them. But if they're obtained illegally, there's some recourse potentially if they publish them. Robert, if that's his real name, said, I suggest you don't be curious about where I got them from. Any answer to this question will compromise me and also legally restricts you from publishing them. So by saying that Politico, out of an abundance of caution, has decided not to show what they have, which is apparently court documents, internal campaign documents, and this dossier on what could potentially be a political liability regarding J.D. Vance. It would be funny to know what they think a liability is surrounding the Vance campaign and what actually, you know, became a liability around his candidacy as vice president. But to blame this on Iran, and Trump is saying, I'm, I'm so strong on Iran, they were not a powerful country when I was president, and that's why they want to get me, because they don't want to be president. It's an interesting way to spin this for Trump. Uh, I think we're all curious what's in there, but I don't think we're going to get to see any of this. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I'm not sure there's anything, we don't know yet that there's anything in there that we don't already know. Uh, you know, P Politico is alluding to Vance's past statements, his criticisms of Trump. We already know that he called Trump 
Hitler and a bunch of other names when he was a never Trumper back before Trump won in 2016. So none of that is new information. But you know, Politico is not publishing the exact stuff, which I have to say is they're not, I would argue they're not required to not publish it. They didn't, you know, this is, it's almost like WikiLeaks. They didn't steal the documents. They, the documents were given to them by someone who stole them. That person could be prosecuted. But if you obtain information, if the, the process was illicit, but the you know, journalists do publish information that was obtained illicitly, as long as, it was pub as long as they're not complicit in the crime of how it was obtained, mm. just as, you know, when, the, when uh, Russia, the hacking of the DNC and the Hillary Clinton stuff, that was, again, the information. Everyone's like, oh, that's Russian, that's Russian interference. Again, yes, it is a crime what the hackers did, but the information given to you was real information. It was not made up, it was not fabricated. It was true information uh, pertaining to Hillary Clinton. So just as this would be true information about J.D. Vance, now I think it's information we largely already know, so it's moot, but it's not, Politico does not have a responsibility, I would argue, to not publish it. There might be some new stuff in there, you don't know, Robbie. Or maybe you do know Robert. Um, <laughs> but I, I like that you brought up Hillary Clinton because many people are saying, people on the internet many are people saying, are saying, many people are saying that the Trump campaign this time around bears, you know, reminiscence of the Hillary Clinton 2016 campaign. What, and that it's doomed? A party front runner crushed opponents in a nasty primary, Yeah. portrayed as the inevitable winner despite everyone hating him, forgets to campaign in swing states, dismisses opponents' crowd signs He's campaigning and enthusiasm. in swing states. He got shot in a swing state. And most importantly and recently have emails hacked and leaked. I guess. Look, things in Trump world, uh, people are not happy right now with how the campaign is being run. I'm seeing a lot of, um, many people are saying, I'm seeing a lot of grumbling <laughs> from uh, connected Republicans with how the campaign is being handled, with what it's focusing on. Uh, I, I will say, Kamala Harris is up a couple points in these swing states. We do have to remember that in, in the 2020 election, Joe Biden was up by as many as seven points at various times, and it ended up being very much, much closer than that. So even if she's up, it doesn't, she is clearly doing better than Joe Biden was a month ago. That's, you know, we'll not discount that, but it is still very close. Either side could win this election. It takes focus and determination, and, um, and the Trump people have to work on that. Now, I just saw some breaking news this morning. Trump is suing the Justice Department for $100 million for the Mar-a-Lago raid. They're saying that was uh, interference with his business operations, uh, torturous interference. It's a common... Uh, civil suit terminology, and so that just got announced um, this morning. So Very interesting, interesting to see what's going to come of that. Maybe he's desperate for cash. Who knows? Well. Uh, <laughs> I think that, yeah, seeing his rather lax campaign schedule comparatively when asked about this, he says, you know, I'm going to let them have their convention. I'm not going to, you know, bother trying to hold rallies when they're doing their own thing. I, I don't really get that. I feel like you should campaign while the convention's happening. I don't, I don't really understand that as a reason for why his schedule's thinned out so much. Um, but my dad did warn me, you know, be careful doing anything with Kamala because there's these AI crowds that are following her around. And yes, we're gonna- It's very scary. We're gonna talk but, uh, more about the crowds think, uh, later on the show. I think that's probably a reason why his schedule has thinned out. I think he doesn't want to be in a situation where people are comparing their crowd sizes, I will say. He's been campaigning for longer than she has, and there's some excitement to want to go to a rally for a candidate you've never had the chance to before. I'm sure a lot of Trump supporters have been to his rallies in the past, so I don't think it's something that will determine who the winner is, what these crowd sizes are. I do think internally it is making them feel very bad and sad. Well, Kamala is benefiting from massive fawning media coverage right now. Um, the media is below, it loves her campaign, is all about it. They, they, they had soured on Biden. Biden was getting no favors from the media. And, and then, in fact, he was getting some of the most intensely negative press coverage that a Democrat has ever gotten in, like, our lifetimes because they wanted to force him from the ticket, which they succeeded in doing, and now they've fallen back in line behind her. And so everything is, I, I, I just saw her on the cover of Time this morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it says, her moment. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, we're getting Barack Obama level historical 
milestone appreciation for Kamala Harris, and uh, you know that's worth that's worth something. It's not going to decide the election necessarily, but it's worth a lot. And uh, and there's but you're right that you know not everyone is thrilled with Trump, although it's interesting, again, to look at the policies. Except for abortion, if you look at the policies, people want Trump's policies. They want his economic policies. They want his immigration policies. The only area, and it's a decisive win, to be clear, but is, is abortion. Other than that, people want a return to Trump policies, but maybe they don't want a return to Trump himself is going to be the decided question of this election. Will people stomach, will people ultimately decide they want Trump's policies you know, warts and all, even if that means four more years of Donald Trump himself, or whether they just can't do it. Well, what's interesting is is the polling shows that, yes, people want Trump's policies, but how these questions are asked matters more. Is the question actually representative of real policies Donald Trump has committed to this time around and things that he supported when he was president or got done as president? If they straight up ask the American people, are you okay with corporate profits being cut? Uh, their taxes being cut by a higher margin than taxes have been cut for working in middle class families. Are you in support of the corporate tax cuts lasting beyond 2025 when the middle class and working class tax cuts expire? People would not be in support of that. And that's one of the biggest impacts the Trump presidency has had on the economy. I do think some of the media coverage is because there's organic support of Kamala Harris, and the media likes giving people what they want to see. We saw social media blow up in support of Kamala Harris. That's not something that's controlled by corporations or the mainstream. That's organic support among people. Uh, she has a favorability rating of 47.5%. Trump in 2016, before he won the presidency, was down at 34%. I and mean, social media sites so are corporations. I would not, yeah, but their corporations cannot control what users are posting on social media. They can. Yes, they can, and they do, and they, no, they can don't. influence. <laughs> they what cannot tell goes people you have to what... post about Kamala Harris. They do not do. That. No, no, no. But they can re-up and promote posts in favor of one person or the other. We haven't seen any evidence of that happening. Okay. We have seen many young people posting on TikTok, posting. You don't on think Twitter, X because it's Instagram. owned by Elon Musk is maybe boosting right-wing stuff? I think I've seen things on my timeline that I've never interacted with before, but we've also seen organically the coconut army take over Twitter. So I think Kamala Harris has a lot of support and excitement right now. And I think, you know, maybe the mainstream media is reflecting what their viewers want to see. They want to see this new campaign. They want to see coverage of it. And she's very popular right now. I think they're reflecting what they want to see, but we will continue paying attention to this more rising in just a minute.